this tutorial is use Refinex to batch fit a range of data sets. These specific data sets that I'm going to show you now are for a deuterated polymer film that's uh, swelling and solvent. I'm just going to change the Q range down to reflect the date, the range over uh, which we really acquired the data. Just so that it, the, uh, the data occupies more of the graph. To start off with, I'm going to change the structure of the theoretical model. In the batch fitting process, subsequent data sets use the, uh, the structure specified in this theoretical model at the top, to, and then that's applied against each data set. So it's important to set up this theoretical model to start off with. I know that uh, this is uh, a, probably going to be a three layer system. Uh, we've got a fronting medium which is air going onto our deuterated polymer, followed by our native oxide layer, finishing off with silicon. The silicon oxide thickness, I'm not going to let it vary, I'm just going to let it uh, be fixed in thickness. Its roughness is um, around three, but I will let that vary. Um, the deuterated polymer thickness uh, is say, oh, I don't know, let's say 600. The scattering length density because it's deuterated might be about six. And I'm going to allow each of those parameters to vary as I will do the scale factor. Um, the Q resolution for this is around 8.7%. Um, and we can either use constant uh, delta Q on Q smearing or use the resolu resolution data in the data file. So if we have that deselected, um, if we have that deselected, then um, it will use the resolution in the data file. If we have it selected, it will use this constant delta Q on Q, and it's about 8.7%. See, the thickness isn't quite right here. The Kiesig fringes are too far to the left, so the fringes, uh, the film's too thick. So I'll select that thickness parameter and use the slider to slowly uh, decrease the thickness. So this thickness is around 517. Uh, I'm going to set a lower limit for the thickness to be, I don't know, 480. Upper thickness to 620. Lower value for the SLD of say 5 going up to 6.6, .6. roughness between say 1 and 12, put in a parameter for the scale factor. I'm not going to allow the background to vary because we don't go out high enough in Q. And we might um, yeah, let the silicon dioxide roughness vary. I'm fixing the thickness of the silicon dioxide, um, but you could obviously let that vary. Once we're happy with the setup parameters, um, I'm going to just re-display all those data sets back in again. Um, once we're happy with the initial setup parameters, what we do is we go fitting, batch fit, the program then goes off and fits each one in sequence. Uh, it's finished now, it's done all of them. If we go to the scattering length density plot, I'll just hide that first one. Uh, these are the transitions in scattering length density profiles as a function of time. Well, as a function of data set. Let's have a look, closer look at this interface. You see the film is gradually getting thicker. It looks to be uh, gradually getting thicker over time. If we go into, say, one of the nodes and have a look at the thickness of the polymer layer, this is now a thickness of 520 plus or minus 0.6 with an SLD of 6.15. Um, let's have a look at the thickness of the first one. 
So look, it doesn't appear to be too different, but there is obviously some variation across these data sets. If we want to get the param all of the parameters out, what we can do is go to Model, Export Parameters, select the parameters we want to export, click on OK. I'm going to save it as a CSV file on the desktop. Let's have a look at that in Excel. And these are the list of uh, the parameters for those models. Each data set has four, consists of four rows. The first row has the data file name. Then the second row is the, the name of all the parameters. So you can recognize what the numbers refer to. The third row has the parameter values. And then the fourth row has the uncertainties. So here we've got a scale factor for the first data set of 0.94 plus or minus 0.01 and we've got that for all those nine data sets. So we could then use this, uh, this spreadsheet or CSV file to plot the thickness of the film or the SLD or what have you for each of the data sets in turn. And that, that batch fitting is fairly, fairly painless. You just got to set, the key thing here is to set up this initial theoretical model. And yeah, that's the end of the batch fitting tutorial.